Welcome everybody, I'm your host Kevin Simon. Once again, welcome to Go For Side Effects. Today we got uh, Wade Renard with us with the 82nd Airborne. Uh, he he was a medic, but I'm going to bring him in. Wade, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing good. Now, I know me and you have talked, but I like everybody to kind of hear, you know, what years you were in and where you served and wh everywhere you were stationed, and then we'll talk about the Gulf. All right. Well, originally I was uh, in the uh, Army Reserves from 1987 to 1990 as an infantryman, and I decided to go on active duty, and I actually had a decent recruiter at the time, and he said, uh, you don't really want to go in as an infantryman and wanted, wanted me to actually get a skill and convinced me to go combat medic. And I said, that's fine, but I had to have uh, airborne. I had to have 82nd in my contract. And they always say, uh, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> and I got everything I asked for. And so I uh, trained as combat medic down at San Antonio and went to airborne school. And ended up right down at Fort Bragg, 82nd Airborne. Okay, I have a really quick question. Why in the hell do you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I mean, I'm you just know, wondering. You know, I have, I have no idea. I, I saw too many movies, watched Rambo <laughs> one too many times. I, that, that's, that, and, you know, that, that, that's everything I wanted. And, you know, like I said, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Oh, man, you're absolutely right. Well, let's talk a little bit about your time during the Gulf War. When when were you out there during the Gulf War? Uh, I deployed over there in uh, August of 1990. Um, I was I was completely a complete cherry at the time, and that cherry being me, person, of course. Yeah. And uh, I was assigned to uh, Charlie Company, Second Platoon, uh, Second of the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Had no idea what was going on. All I knew was, you know, I had a lot of sergeants, a lot of NCOs above me that I was reporting to, and flew over to a Saudi on a 141. We went as a as a, a forward party, and my platoon sergeant at the time was great. I still remember him to this day, Eric Crocker. Uh, long story short, he actually he was like a, a surrogate father to me. Through the whole through the whole time, and we uh, flew on a uh, you know troop seats flying over there. Remember getting on the plane and sitting down, and everybody coming over, and it's like, Doc, hey, I need some Benadryl, I need some Benadryl, and that's all they wanted. They just wanted some pills to knock them out. And flew there, flew to Spain, stayed there for a short time, and then from uh, Spain we we uh, ended up in Saudi Arabia. Oh wow. And uh, we ended up there on uh, 20 August, 90. Wow. That's a, I got out there around September the 14th. And, uh, you know, one of the things whenever you were flying in and y'all landed and everything, what was the biggest thing that you noticed when, when you got there? Was it the all the oil rigs on fire? No, no, not at that time. We, we were in Saudi Arabia. And the uh, biggest thing we noticed, it, it was just hot. You know, that's what everybody always asks. And, you know, what do you remember? It's just the heat. <laughs> you know, just, just getting off the plane, and it was just the heat. And uh, water bottles, you know, cases of water everywhere, and a lot of empty water bottles everywhere. And I, I, that's that's all I can say. It was just, it was just hot. Yeah. You know, double hot. You know, double spit hot. And then when and, and then when you when y'all were over there, did you ever see the burn pits or the oil rig fires? Yeah, yeah, we were engulfed in in uh, in, in um, the oil or the smoke, and we had our own burn pits. We were lucky enough when we got there. Um, we actually went to a place that was called Champion, Maine, and uh, Champion, Maine, named after the Second Airborne, of course, but. Uh, and which was actually a really nice facility. And um, we, we left there quite often to go out and do training out in the desert. But, it, I mean, I, we were fortunate enough because because we actually were there early that we, we did get nice facilities. I, I can't complain about that. Um, but uh, 
funny story about that. Just showing up there the, the, the first day, we we're on buses. We show up at Champion, Maine. These are brand new barracks. Nobody's ever lived in them. Saudi Air Force. And um, we all know the customs, obviously. Right. And so, you know, and Joe's drinking a lot of water, Joe being GI, but Joe's drinking a lot of water on the buses, and they got to go. They, 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 they got to pee. And so they're, they're running off the buses. They're running the barracks. They're looking for the bathrooms. And there's this little wall. And it's probably a good 10 feet long, probably about three feet high. They have no idea. So all, there's all these Joes standing up on top of this wall, and they're all, they're, all, they're all peeing into this pit. And nobody has no idea. And they come to find out that's where they, that's the, that was the foot wash. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. We, we had, <laughs> nobody had no idea. <laughs> yeah, no idea. Yeah, I, I remember I, like that happened yesterday. Oh, my gosh. That's a Marine for you right there. That's all I yep, can say. Crazy. <laughs> now, after you got back from Desert Storm, what kind of complications were you having? Well, honestly, when we got back, it's not like today, I guess. But when we got back, nobody was thinking health issues. We got back. We had a great welcome home at Pope Air Force Base. Um, it was like, get home, get your gear turned in. All right, now all anybody's looking at is going on leave, getting home, seeing their loved ones. There was no uh, post-deployment counseling. There was nothing. It was like, you know, you know, get your shit right in your head and just go on, go on about business. Yeah, that's and cool. You know, and being new to the unit, you know, at the time, I was just like, this, this is what it's all about, whatever. You know, I came home, did my... Uh, Two week, two week leave, and right back to the unit, right back to training, right, right back to doing what we do. And so, you know, there was there was none of that. And you, in the eighty seconds, a whole nother breed. It's it's you, you don't complain, you don't you don't whine, you don't cry. If you do, you're gone. You know. Yeah. And. As far as the army is concerned, I've, I've said it for years, and I'm, I'm not I'm not crying about it, but the 80 seconds is the closest thing to a cult that the army has. And you know, I was a part of it. I love it. It's it's the second most biggest accomplishment next to my child that I have. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's a really good statement. And then. But when I mean, did you when did you start developing issues, and and what issues have you developed over time? Uh, I'd probably say I'm sure it was probably in '91 going into '92. Um, a, a lot of what what, what they classify as quote unquote uh, cold and flu symptoms, runny nose. Uh, a lot of my guys was like they've been they kind of fun of me. Like I always carried around a handkerchief with me all the time. Um, I developed skin rashes. Nobody really knew what that was going on. Um, I, I started getting a little bit of fatigue going on. Um, right or wrong, back then, and we're we're talking uh we're talking early '90s back then. So yeah, anything went back then. To be honest with you. Um, I did a lot of steroids and so, I mean, I did everything I could to keep up, to, to do my job. That's, that's what I did. And so, um, you know, it was 90, late 92, early 93. I was the first attempt at a selection for special forces. I failed. That was a voluntary withdrawal later in 93. It was late 93. I tried special forces selection again. I passed. I was not chosen. And I, I, I called it, I called it done. And I walked off a brag in uh, mid 94. I threw my boots in the tree and I walked. Wow. Man, I, I know like with a lot of us, a lot of us who got out because I got out in 93 also. And 
I, I exhibited having problems while I was like three months after Desert Storm. You know, I, I was mysteriously bleeding, you know, and uh, nobody could figure it out. I've been in and out of hospitals. Uh, I had kidney problems. I was passing stones like crazy. And uh, I mean, just so much. I was fatigued all the time. Uh, then I ended up getting neuropathy later on in life. And which a lot of people are starting to have a lot of neurological problems. And I, I think the crazy part about the neurological problems, it isn't just the, the pain, you know, cause me and you talked and we talked about essential tremors. Yes. And I, I mean, uh, that that's what I'm dealing with now. But a lot of the desert storm vets have kidney problems, lung problems, liver problems. I mean, there's so many presumptives out there that it's just unbelievable. Well, that's what I'm going tomorrow for, is for a, another liver test. It's called a, a gamma GT, a, a blood test. Uh, the reference range is 12 to 24, and mine was 584. Yeah. So I'm going for a retest tomorrow to see what's going on there. Yeah, and hopefully it's good news. You, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I pray it is good news. Yeah, you're doing right. And you, you know, with a, with a lot of guys who are coming back, you know, like when I've talked to uh, Jason last week, you know, he was talking about uh, some of his buddies already passed away. I've had some buddies pass away, and nobody knows why, but it seems like the Desert Storm veterans uh, and the Gulf War vets are dying off fast, faster than what the Vietnam veterans are. It's it just it's weird. Well, they say that we're supposed to be aging at a, a rate of a, at an average of 10 years faster than our, what our normal age would be, which would put me at 62, I guess. Yeah. That... And, you know, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer here a couple of six months ago. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. Um, you know, uh, with, with uh, presumptives that we talked about before, you know, with the IBS, um, we talked about, uh, uh, one of my biggest issues besides the fatigue was the cluster headaches yeah. that I've been dealing with or going on better than six years now. And cluster headaches is that, that's, that, that, that's just a bitch. I mean, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. That's, and, that's painful, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I have uh 10 bottles of straight oxygen. I have injections, I have pills, you know, they, they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea why. Right. And, uh, you know, some I wrote down here, you know, they think it's because of the low dose John did. He put down that he thinks it's the low dose of exposure Saddam did. I mean, we're, we're learning so much. We're learning that, you know, that we were sprayed with mustard gas, sarin gas. I mean, it's just so, um, it just amazes me that everything we were exposed to and also with everything that were given to us, you know, the P tabs, anthrax. So I think with the mixture of everything is kind of hurting all of us veterans. But, well, and there, there was no record keeping. Right. That, well, I'm sure there was, it just probably got lost. <laughs> it got well, deep right, right. in the sea. But when you got a hundred guys and you, and you know they're they're popping their PB pills, you can't keep track. You go you go guy by guy, take your pill, take your pill, take your pill. Nobody's documenting that. Oh right, right, exactly. You know, and uh, I mean, and with a lot of the guys who are, are are coming home, some people exhibited problems in the very beginning, some uh, about middle of their age, and some starting now. And we got a lot of veterans and veteran spouses that aren't understanding what exactly is going on. But the more that I dig into it and, and the more that I start seeing the stuff that we were, ex especially the, the mustard gas and, and the stuff out there that, I mean, just pisses you off. The burn pits, the oil rigs. It's like, you, you know, they should have came out. And, and give us an answer by now. I mean, it's been 31 years since, you know, what was it? Yesterday or day day before? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was yesterday. 
you, you know, 31 years and we still don't have an answer. And we can't get a definitive answer. And that's what's pissing us off. And that's uh, every veteran out there should be pissed off about this because Iraqi freedom guys is coming up to them. Yeah, you know, Afghanistan is going to come up to them. I mean, they're going to want answers too. And this should not be the way that we have to get our answers at all. Well, no. And, you know, we're, we're our veterans organization. I, I know American Legion has done a lot. Uh, VFW, they've done a lot. Um, but their hands are tied as well. Right, right. Uh, it seems like a lot of people's hands are really destroyed. Uh, not not destroyed, but, you, you know, um, tied. It's like they almost, like, and this is where me, you now are going to get into the VA. And so it's like when you go to the VA, your doctor will tell you one thing, but they'll write something different down. It's just the truth. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I want to talk about your experience with the VA. Well, okay. So uh, I'm in the Iowa VA. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, my whole plan was to relocate. Um, solely due because of the health care that I do get here in Iowa, I, I'm finding it very hard to relocate. Uh, my primary care will be the first to admit that she knows very little about go for illness, any kind of go for syndrome, any kind of, but she will bend over backwards to run any tests, any blood tests, any kind of test. She ran a thing. Um, oh, what the heck was that? The, the, a nuclear cardiac test, whatever, where they simulate a heart attack. Now that was a hell of a test. And, but she will do anything to find the answers. So she's, she's doing her job. That's great to hear. Um, the one, the one doctor that I actually ran into who was working for Comp and Pen, who actually understood go for illness, was fired by the VA because he actually understood it and was awarding and, and writing favorable opinions for go for illness for veterans. Wow. See, and, and, and that and and that's <laughs> I think that's the part that makes me mad is you know, you got people out there that are really on their side, but then they're letting them go. Well, right, because it's it's uh what's the saying, deny, 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 uh watch them die. Yeah. I mean that's the less they pay, I mean that's better off they are. Right. And you got a fellow Iowan guy here, John. He he's from Iowa, and and I've talked to him. He's been on the air, and he'll tell you he loves Iowa. He he loves the VA there, and I mean, I I will say I like Houston. I I, I like my VA doctors. They're they're very good. They're very attentive. If I send them a message, and I I, I think you know there's. There's some guys that who I've talked to outside of the program that, you know, they walk right into the VA and start bitching, moaning, or groaning uh, about what's going on and what they expect. And I, I'm kind of taking a different approach with my doctors. I'm, I'm educating them about it. I'm telling them that, okay, look, let me tell you about what all went on out there. Let me tell you all about this. And one of my doctors actually listens to this program. And so, which I think is fantastic because then he gets to hear other veterans from other parts, but not all VA systems is like the ones we, we have, and we need all of no. them to get together and work together and, and start helping the, the, the desert storm veterans out at least get some, at least let's start making some progress with us. You know, and the research teams out there. Well, and that's that's just it. There's so many other places out there that are actually doing research right now that we're you have to look outside the VA for help. Yes, yes. There's a lot of research, and and you've done some research. I have. Yeah, I, I've participated in several different uh, research studies, and. I've been in a, I went out to San Francisco here a few years back, uh, 
and that was a study on the hippocampus, small part of the brain. Uh, the major thing was uh, short-term memory, which I have serious issues with. I make lists of lists of lists, and I can't tell you what I had for lunch today, but I can tell you something from 30 years ago. Right. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy. Um, I participated. I went down to which that was something very important. I want to bring up uh, the Ross Camp Institute down in Sarasota. Uh, Florida, they're they're doing some great things, great and wonderful things. Veterans should reach out to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're doing great things down there. They have a great new coordinator named Grace. Um, easy enough to find on, on, the, on the computer. And, you know, they can contact you, contact me, whatever, and get contact information. Right, exactly. And, and the other thing, I mean, if we got time. No, we got plenty of time. Okay. Um, about a year ago, uh, a, lot of, a lot of veterans uh, may or may not be familiar with uh, Dr. Garth Nicholson, who uh, he, he actually started back in the late 90s. I'm going to say about, give or take, about 1998 doing research with Go For Veterans. He's one of the first researchers. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was his daughter, stepdaughter that had served and was ill. Fast forward to recent, and he has been, he's working with a nutritional supplement. A year ago, I started taking it, and it's called NTF Factor, Energy Lipids. Um, I started taking that about a year ago. I was having serious fatigue issues, this, that, the other. Mm-hmm. Within three months. I was a brand new person. Wow. And I've taken that consistently for a year. I mean, people can go to the website. It's just ntfactor.com. They can do their own research. Yes, it's pricey, but yes, it works. I, I, will, I will be a, a living testament to that. Right. It yeah. has completely turned my life around. Yeah, you were telling me about that, and I, I think that's great. Anything we can do to help one another, you know, try to find uh, some kind of of help and everything. I mean, uh, I believe I just saw Sarah right down there that um, Sarah just asked a little bit ago about, you know, does the VA, you know, are people connected, called you know, go for syndrome. Really and truly, it that they, they don't. That they, it's not. It's it's go for that. That's that's all they diagnose you with and everything. It's under the go for. So, sir, I, I have no idea what they even classify it as now. To be honest with yeah, you, I have I, no idea. I, I know I, since ninety five, I've been mine's been classified under the go for. And so, you know, I literally have a letter from a doctor that says my conditions he believes were caused by the go for. And so I was, uh, I was going to tell you something interesting. So I've been emailing a guy named Julian from France and he's been talking about all the toxins over there during desert storm. And this guy's like, you you know, I I guess he found my program out, uh, out there and he's been listening and he's been sending me information. I would love to get him on the show. And, and I believe he was from out there too. And I also believe that he studies the Gulf War problems. And he's been talking about the, you know, metallic metals and all kinds of stuff out there that's been an issue with us. And so it's very interesting. I I, I want to get him on, but he, he did laugh. He said, well, most of my stuff's in, in French. And I'm like, well, I can translate it on my phone. Thank goodness. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, you know, I I think it's fantastic that you have found a product that has helped you. And I'm glad you brought that up on the show. And it's, it's I've had Shannon on here talk about, you know, different kind of meats to eat. And, and, you know, she's a health coach. And so, you know, there's all, everybody is helping everybody with this. And I think it's outstanding. And so... 
I definitely want you to send me all the, the information on it. And so that way I get, I can make sure I put it up properly on our Facebook page so people can check it out. Now you were talking about, um, some of the, the, the side effects of it and, and everything that me, you were talking about, like, you don't believe you should take it in, you know, in, in, in abundance, correct? Right. I, I guess personally for me, um, the whole concept is that the powder itself is going to pull the toxins from the cells where it's been stored, and then you're going to excrete it through your feces. Yeah. Um, which I honestly feel it did. And you'll, you'll know when it does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it'll take one to two months. Um, I honestly feel that a year, in my opinion, and this is something I, I just actually just received an email from the doctor tonight and I haven't had a chance to respond to him. Um, I think for me, it was doing it too rapidly. Right. So I think I was having some side effects from that. Right. And, and, and what's the name of the product again? It's a, a capital N, capital T, and the word factor. Okay. It, uh, and then there's actually a website and it's just dot com. Okay. Um, and it, it, the website actually breaks down the product really good, uh, way, way good in layman's terms, explains how it works, and the science behind it is it, it's there. Um, I'm, I'm a true believer in the product. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you were um, telling me about it. Yep, yep. I just think that, you know, I was probably using too high of a dose. And, you know, I just kind of had some, you know, some bad effects from it from using it for so long term. I was, I'm, I'm, I, I've taken a break from it. Um, I, when I go back on it, I'm probably going to use it three months on, one month off. Okay. And just kind of cycle it that way. That's awesome. And I would love um, to get that doctor to come on this show. If, if you can talk to him and stuff like that, I would love for him to come on and kind of talk about the product and, and, and the stuff. Because I, I think a lot of guys need to know about this kind of stuff. And maybe it will help a lot of guys with fatigue, you, you know, with all, you know, some of the problems and, and start getting more uplifting. I mean, the more products that, that we can help each other with, I, I mean, it is better. I mean, a lot of people. Well, I agree. I agree. I, mean, I think I think possibly you know, reaching out to uh, Grace over at the the Ross Camp Institute, um, Bo's over there as well, and maybe get one of them on to explain what they have going on. I don't want to speak for them because you know I'm not associated with them. Right. Right. Um, but I, I think they have a really really good program going on over there. Um, as long as my labs come back good tomorrow, I'm planning on a trip down there and. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on board with their, their current study they have going on, you know, and that's that's the whole thing. One, the, the outreach they they have to have the outreach, but the veterans themselves they have to take ownership of their own health. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I totally agree with that. Hey, wait, we're gonna take a a a a, a little break for an ad, and we'll be right back. Okay. Go for side effects is sponsored by Wild Branch Products. Wild Branch is a truly pure cannabis oil. They make CBD containing 0.00% THC and no carrier oils. Use Wild Branch oils and solves to calm, cool, and soothe your body, leaving you pain free. I can tell you, using this product, I was able to go to Santa's Wonderland with my family. I put on a salve. I used the oils. I was able to walk for hours. I believe in this product 100%. Use promo code GWI podcast for 15% off. Use promo code GWI podcast for 15% off. Click the link below. Thank you. Now back to the show. Okay. We're, 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 we're back. Okay. So, when, when you talk about ownership and, and everything, I, I totally agree with that because, you know, you, you can't go out and, and poison your own body by drinking, doing drugs and stuff like that. I, I mean, it, it's true, you know, that especially as you're getting older, you need to be more healthy and you, you need to start taking ownership of it. I agree 100% with that. 
Absolutely. And, um, and John asked me, I, I had two questions on here that I do want to answer. Somebody asked me, are they, ha, have, you know, I guess me or you or anybody seeing, you know, uh, cases in Parkinson's and he, because he was talking about right, right after desert storm, he was having tremors. I'm going through, I, I have seen, I'm going through tremors right now that the doctor can't explain. And because me, you, Wade, we, we talked about this. But I I do know my tremors are getting worse. So I think they're going to end up doing a test in April. And next week I see my primary, which I want to go to. I'm going to see if I can't go to an outside doctor because I can't get in until April. And then on top of that, John's asking, how long did you see the change? Seeing any changes? How long did it take you to see the changes? Within two months. Two months. That's, that's, That's pretty damn good. Um, and I, I, I just, I just got a, a friend, a mutual, a, an acquaintance of mine. I got her started on this product and I told her when you start in, I'm not trying to be gross, but when you start seeing a white film that is, co- that your feces is coated in, then you know, it's working. Okay. Yeah. That, that's great to know. And I then- mean, that's, that's when it's working. Yeah, and see, and that that's 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 awesome to know. You know, with your own experiences, you're going to help a lot of people out by by answering a lot of these questions. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions even later on. People are going to have, and they'll probably, you know, they can email me or they can just type uh, messages on here, and, and that way you can see them and respond to them on the Facebook page. Oh, and if, if people could have seen me two years ago, you know, I. Like you and I talked, I had a rib cut out. I was I was very sedentary, sitting at home doing nothing, and you know, and it's just, I mean, the, the 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 product itself is not cheap, okay? But beer and liquor and cigarettes and everything else, it's not cheap either. That's so right. I had to decide what was more important, and you know, so I went ahead and I rolled. It took me a year to decide to even start this product. Oh, wow. And so, you know, I, I finally, you know, I finally bit the bullet and, tr- and started it, tried it. I actually got into a study. And so I, I was provided six months of product, which was great. I mean, but I, I can, I still continue the product after the six month study. That's how much I believed in it. But I mean, I am a completely a hundred percent different person. I feel as good as I did, you know, back in my twenties. Oh, that's awesome. But again, I don't want to discount other studies. I'm very, very anxious to try going down to Ross camp and giving, giving whatever they're doing down there. I'm anxious to give that a shot as well to, you know, to, you know, try to find answers. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree a hundred percent. I I agree. It, I, I'm glad you at least found something that is giving you comfort to at least, you know, it's helped you. And, and, and yeah, that's a really big thing, you know, and, and so, but, but the other thing that a lot of people need to understand too, <laughs> is this isn't just affecting the veterans. This is affecting our children. Absolutely. It is. And, and me, you had a really good conversation. About, and it seems like that, you know, our daughters were in the hospital almost around the same damn time. And they, they had, uh, you know, with, with, you know, my daughter, you know, she had unexplained bleeding and they, they couldn't understand it. They, they did every test under the moon and their only answer was, we don't know. That's exactly what I had while I was their age after the Gulf War. Exact same thing, and I, I'm, that's that's, what, that's kind of what I'm going through with my daughter right now. Right, and so you know, it just isn't the the vets. You know, we pass something on our kids that we need to try to figure out what the hell it was that that is affecting our children. And uh, I mean that the, to me, one of the most in, in important things is for our kids to have a healthy and secure and safe life. 
And yeah. I mean, you know, my daughter was diagnosed with POTS. There's a lot of, and, and you know, EDS. So there's a lot of things that are coming out in studies, even with the Gulf War uh, Babies website. You know, their, yep, their, yep. their children are going through the same thing. And, but their children are going through a whole lot worse than what we, we did. Neurological problems. And I, I, I just, I think they ought to evaluate our children. When I was down at Ross Camp, uh, my daughter and I went down there in, I believe it was August. And I went down there for myself uh, for a study thing. And one of the coordinators that, uh, was sitting talking with her. And everything that she was describing to him, his daughter was going through at the time. Wow. And, um, you know, at 18 years old, colonoscopy, endo, upper, lower GIs. It's like, you know, diagnose anorexia, anxiety, you know, uh, petite mall epilepsy when she was in the first grade. It's like, where is this coming from? Right. And I, I think the, the part that, I think the part that started getting us concerned was she would have fainting spells just out of nowhere. It was just like, you know, we had to pick her up one night from work. And, uh, and, and like Sarah was sitting there saying, you know, uh, Sarah, uh, Hyatt is asking about, you know, what, what is pots and, and Sarah, it, it's almost a, a unexplained. Um, it, it's about fainting, and it's almost like it's a. It, they get really low energy. Uh, t- tell me if I'm right on this way. They they get they have low energy, and it's almost like, uh, they get really lightheaded and they'll faint anytime, and uh, it it could be while driving, it could be while working, it could be while you know drill team. And uh, it it's just weird, you know. It's almost like it, it's something that it, it, there's no cure for it. It and it's it pots is a, a very um, it, it's a very serious condition, but it's not a deadly condition. Right. And, and it's just a very it's an unexplained condition. That's why I guess they call it pots. I don't know why they named it pots. I don't know why the hell they just didn't name it lightheaded fainting. Yeah, you know. I mean, at least put well, that in redneck term. <laughs> well, Sarah Hyatt, uh, she's actually uh, the mother of my daughter. Okay, so so she she she's been through this. Yes, and and yeah, and I, I'll tell tell you what, it, there is nothing worse than a spouse going, you know, seeing all what's going on and not knowing what they can do. Or not being able to help them. Right, right. And I mean, a, a and, lot. And well, knowing, no, knowing that there's something wrong and they can't figure it out. Right, right. And the bleeding is the one thing that gets me. And so, uh, that there you go, Sarah. Uh, Sarah Boyd answered. I, I apologize. It's a result of uh, 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 autonomic, uh, well, I can't say the word, uh, neur- neurop- you know, neuropathy. It does. It, it, it's with your blood she's pressure changes. Well. Yes. And she's very knowledgeable. She she can answer probably more yeah, questions than I could about it. Yep. And uh, I mean, one thing that our our, our children and everything are, are, are seeing is that it's not just affecting one or two or three little things. It, it's, a, it's, it's just as much as we are. Oh, right, right. It's a full body system. Yes. And and it's it, most of it is neurological. That's that's what it is. So and and I know there's been a lot of studies where they actually don't study maybe what type of trace of chemical that that's out there. Some do, some don't. And so I think they need to bunch it all into one and um uh, and and sit there and and do one big study on 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 our kids and and us what exactly we were exposed to was it the medicine 
Was it the chemicals? Was it a combination of both? And, and I know Sarah Boyd is a very big advocate for yes. trying, trying to get stuff done and get legislation passed. Um, and, and it's funny because John just asked, uh, are your daughters uh, tall and blonde? Uh, uh, yeah, I would, I would almost say that my, my daughter's, uh, you know, tall and, and blonde. Sometimes blue, sometimes, you know, brunette. It just depends what, you know, day of the month it is. And I'll probably get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, my daughter's five foot and maybe 90 pounds on a good day. Yeah. And and, and that's just it, you know, uh, weight loss. And, I mean, the kids just, you know, go through so much. and And it's hard for a parent to sit back and watch it. And well, we're getting, to, we're getting to that age now. I mean, there's things going on with us, but it could be just age-related. I mean, that's what a lot of veterans don't understand. I see on a lot of I see on a lot of sites. It's like I have this, I have this, I have this. Okay, well, you know, you're you're, you're 55 years old. You know, you, you eat like crap, you drink beer, you smoke cigarettes, you're gonna have high blood pressure. I'm sorry. Right, right, right. There, there are stuff you know, that that over time and over age, like eyesight and stuff like this. Right. You look, you 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 live, you live your life. You're you're doing good. If you're still alive and you, and you live like that. You're doing, you're doing good. That's right. You know, I'm sorry. Right. But, you know, let's 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 back up the stuff here and let's let's think about our kids. That that's that's my thing. I want to help. I want to help veterans, of course. That's why I'm I'm trying to go out and do these studies. But you know, my 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 point is to help the kids. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's that's what needs to be helped. Our, I think our children need it more than we do. I mean, I there'll be some people that agree, some people who disagree. But if you if you never seen your kid in a hospital for in, in and out of hospital for years then you have no idea what it's like to watch your kid go through something that you know you you probably passed on to them. Right. You know, and it just it, it burns my ass, man. It, it's it's heartbreaking. But I know... And the VA's not going to be there. So we have to rely on these outside places like, like the Ross camp. I... I I know there's another place and, and I don't want to misspeak. So if someone I can't see. So if someone, if I misspeak, I, the Nova Institute yes. in Miami, I've, I've, I've seen their, you know, they're on their website. Yeah. With Jimmy, somebody had, had mentioned that they are doing something with uh, kids or going to, again, I don't want to misspeak, but I mean, I think somebody needs to put some dollars into doing some research into that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, I'm all for, hey, let's go out and save the extinct owls, you know, or what, whatever. But, I mean, our, to me, our kids, our, our, our kids come first. Right. Like I said, 52 years old, I'm doing good, you know? Yeah. And... You know, if I go another 10 or 15 or 20 years, I'm happy. But my kids still have their whole life ahead of her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100%. And, uh, I mean, I, I'll tell you the one thing, because when me, you were sitting there talking, it, it's amazing how many children out there that are, I mean, I have friends who are on my shift that their their kids have the same thing my daughter does. I mean, there's so many people out there that don't realize. I mean, go to the Go for uh, Babies website, uh, guys. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the Go for I, um, Sarah Boyd's gonna have to chime in on that because I, I don't remember the exact verbiage. Go for parent and baby. Yeah, babies and parents, something like that. And then I mean, you type in anything like that, it's gonna come up. And then Operation, you know, Truth, that serves yeah. a part of. I tell you what, that's a good one too. I, and then Go for Illness, and oh, there it is. Go for Babies and Parents United Facebook group. Thank you, sir. And then, um, 
go for illness, go for illness related. I mean, there's so many out there, go for syndrome. There's so many pages. We all need to be connected. Cause I put when, when I go live, I, I put it on every page. Like, Hey, I'm going to be live. Cause everybody's story is, is different, but it's the same. And, and I, I find that very fascinating. I mean, heck, I talked to a guy who was from Europe and I mean, his story was no different than our story. And, but they get treated a whole lot worse than what we do. I mean, I thank God for our VA after talking to him. Well, I, here's, here's my issue. God strike me down. Anybody from my platoon is listening. I meet them, hopefully they are. But like my platoon, my old platoon, I just I just reconnected with him three years ago on Facebook. I just got on Facebook, and but nobody talks about it, right? Um, and it's like I don't know if it's like a you know a bad voodoo. Nobody you know nobody wants to admit to it or what, but nobody talks about it. Do you want me to tell you what it is? I had a guy sum it up to me, and I mean this guy summed it up to me better than anything we were the generation that we did not complain about stuff we didn't and, you don't complain about nothing right you got a broken leg here's some advil get right right or uh, uh, ko pecte <laughs> yeah yeah that's some yeah, nasty exactly. crap and then jason uh johnson just to recap on the gulf war he he asked if we do a little recap real quick with, uh, about the kids and everything we talked about our kids having pods eds you know all stuff like that uh, our our daughters are have gone through over the years the bleeding being in a hospital, you know w that's what we we talked about you know cardio also, you, you know but it, but more and more people are talking about it now. I, I I'm finding that as I'm doing the program more and more people are wanting to talk about it. People are like okay hey you know what this is the way to get the message out. And they also don't teach our war at all in no, school. No, they don't. And no, they don't. Yeah, I mean, our war is, hey, you know what? Oh, it's just, uh, you know, about a month it was over with. No, it wasn't a month. It's still ongoing. I mean, it, it's every day these guys come home and, and, and we, we live with these, the stuff that, that we have. And... Then you got people that say, you know, hey, it's just it. You'll get over it. Or you'll get this, and then as time it gets worse and worse and worse. And but people need to talk more about it. This needs to be a better education for high school. So these kids, when they go into the military, they're not going to go through what we went through. They're going to ask questions. They're going to be like, wait a second. Let's talk about the Gulf War vets and what they went through. Well, we should have done that. You know, we should have learned the lessons from the Vietnam vets. Yeah, damn and we didn't right. learn the lesson there. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't know about that until after we got out. So hopefully this is going to be, uh, hopefully over time, word's going to get out and word's going to spread about you know, everything we're doing out there, vets helping vets. I mean, we, we need to come together and be organized as a group. And, and I, I think this is a great start. I, I think more and more we're talking about it. More and more we're helping. I made great friends. That's all I, I, one thing I can say, I made hella good friends doing this. I mean, if I have a question, I, I I promise you right now, I'll call John right on the phone and be like, hey, I got a question for you. Me, him, will talk and everything. And I mean, that that's what's great it is is we're not alone in this. We're, we're all together. Well, right. well, yeah, that's just it. There's a lot of good connection, a lot of good people out there, you know? Right. And, you know, I, I just did that with a guy named Bo, Bo Marshall. I, I had a question. Send him, send him a message. Hey, how do I do this? You can do this. Okay, I'll do that. Well, then it's done. You know? Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, and the other thing that a lot of these vets are trying to file their claims, 
especially now at this point in time, I'll just give you a quick, quick summary. I, I helped a friend of mine. Um, oh, I, I helped him to a point to where I, as far as I could get him, um, they need to get a VSO, you know, veteran service yeah. officer. Yeah. From their state. They, they, yes. Don't, they cannot do it on their own. You're you know, that's, I bring that up every time. You can't go out alone. These these people, that's what they get paid for. Um, I got my buddy. I got him hooked up with a local uh, county VSO. Um, she got the, the claim filed. He had his common pen. He got an exam. The guy's messed up. He already got a check in the mail. Um, plus, he has more exams. He's messed up. I, I've ne- I have never seen a claim move this fast in 30 years. I've never seen a claim move this fast. Yeah. It seems to be moving faster for some reason. Uh, it's because, it, because it's been, uh, all, all legislation has been passed. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, be, it, it's more acceptable now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, no different than, uh, because, uh, Sarah asked, you know, uh, how come you think agent orange is, you know, more well known now than what go for and everything is. Well, here's the reason why is because we have 50 years of history. Yeah. Damn right. That's exactly what I was going to say. I, uh, it, it, Denise Nichols put it in a good way. The Vietnam veterans, it was their, their time with the VA, the go for vets it's their time with the VA. And I mean, it, it at, at first it's dumb logic, but I understand it. And she was like, Iraqi freedom guys are going to have their time and, you know, this. And But it's true. That's how the VA seems to operate and everything. And it's more because Vietnam veterans also got together and they started their push. They started saying, uh-uh, something's wrong. Something isn't right. Too many veterans are having way too many complications of the exact same things. They're of the living. exact same thing. That's right. And that's the push the Desert Storm veterans are making now. Because you you go anywhere out here and you talk to them about the Gulf War at, at our VA, they know about it. They know there were chemicals used. And so, I mean, we need to press as much as we can on these doctors about let's learn more. Let's not scream at them. Let's, let's educate them. Well, I think I think that's our biggest our biggest drawback is we we have not organized. Right, right, and and and, and uh, we're organizing now, but we need to get better organized. Right, and, and the one thing, and this is just me personally, just my opinion. I, I, I'm the biggest offender, but if we can leave politics out of it. Obviously, that goes better. Amen. Um, I, I sent a friend of mine a political thing the other day as a joke, but it was just <laughs> as a, you know, you know, and he sent me a thing back and said, you know, no politics, please. You know, fair enough. I get it. I, you know, and but but if, if we just leave politics out of it, that, that makes things go a lot smoother. That's right. I And I say this on my show all the time. This is not a Republican, a Democrat, independent this is a Gulf War problem. This is a problem for everybody in this country. That's exactly, there, there is no if, ands, or buts. I mean, this right here is, we have a, a, a situation going on with the Gulf War vets, and we want it handled, and we want it taken care of. You know, one thing that I've seen just watching different Gulf War uh, groups recently, like recently in the last year and a half, maybe, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of vets getting awarded a, a PTSD uh, non-combat. I don't know if you've seen that or not. No, I haven't seen that. I, I, I know of a couple who have. Um, again, just my opinion. I think they're awarding that. The VA is awarding that um, because they have they have no they have no idea else what what else to do. 
Yeah. They, they know this, they know this veteran sick and they're like, we don't know, we don't know what to award him. So we're going to call it PTSD and non-combat, which I don't understand what that is if they were there, but you know, that, that's, that's just something I've seen. So it's kind of like a, we're going to throw this bone out there. We're going to award this, be happy and go away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, um, I, I got to ask here, who do you contact to get a VSO? Okay. I'm, I'm going to, oh. <laughs> I'm going to answer oh, go this ahead, go one. Ahead. In your state, uh, Charmaine, in, and any, uh, I don't, uh, can you tell me what state you're in? And then I can help a little bit more because like oh, Texas, yeah. Texas has their, the, it's, it's, it's Texas veteran service officer. That's exactly who they are. So if you live, uh, in Colorado, it'd be Colorado, uh, veteran service office officer. It, it is. And, and it's done by county. Yes, Jason, it is done by county. Every county has a VSO officer. And you can find them in your VA clinics if you have a clinic. Or you can also find them uh, uh, if you get underneath. Uh, if you look underneath. Uh, like uh, almost almost cannot believe I'm going to say this. Yellow pages. But do it through through your phone, or if you have a yellow pages, look under uh, veterans uh, service officer, and, and it'd be under government. My ours is considered under governmental. So yep, here in Iowa, we, we have we have the county as well, as as well as your American Legion. All your American Legion has VSOs as well as your VFWs and your DVAs. Yes. Yes. They all have service officers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every single one of them have service officers, and I, I would I try to go to the local lev- level more than I yes. w- would yes, go to the outside. The local level. You know, because yes. they're they're the ones who really seem to help more, and they know a lot. They know the proper paperwork to fill out because you try to do it on your own. That uh, they're going to deny you every time. It'll and, take you twenty years. Trust me. And when you were talking about uh, PTSD, another thing too is like every time I go to my clinic and I I have to laugh, this is to me is one of the funniest stories. Uh, It's a Filipino nurse. He'll come in and he'll be like, "Uh, Mr. Simon, how are you feeling today? I'm like, fine. And he's just like, "Uh, are you, are you uh, having any anxious tendencies right now? I'm like, no. And then he asked me all these questions. I'm like, oh, wait a second. It's because I'm on some Boston Lyrica for my neuropathy. He's like, oh, thank God. I mean, every time I walk in there, he asked me the same questions. And it's just like, look at my record. It will tell you why I take the medicine. You know, because I'm about the least depressed person in this world. And I mean, to me, I mean, I, I like having fun. I have a good time. But it is funny to to see them nurses like really caring. Then once you tell him what it's for, and he realizes it's not depression, then he's like, "Oh well, hell, whatever." <laughs> well, yeah, same thing. And every time you go to the doctor, find my care, or whatever. I mean, they always ask me, "And how many alcoholic beverages a day do you drink?" Yes. What's the magic answer? You know, I, I, zero. Well, I, two. I say two. And I hope Sarah High is still not on. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but so, okay, you're good to go. Absolutely, I'm good to go. You know, it's, I don't know where they come up with this. Oh, that, you know, I will bring that up while we're talking about that. Um, back in the mid 90s, when uh, I got out, uh, came by, home, by, by the way, she just says she is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, okay, well, yeah, she she is the mother of my daughter. So, um, I had a really good support system, and I had, I had there was a great uh, support group that was here for for Desert Storm Vets, um, and they introduced me to the Vet Center. I, I highly recommend 
if, if you haven't been to the vet center, if, if you don't know where it is, just look up the vet center, go to the vet center. I've been there 25 years now going. I, I still go today. I have an appointment on Friday. Go to the vet center. It's so much easier to go and talk to somebody. Yes. Yes, it is. You know, and, I, and I, 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 John's I asking, what, what, Maybe what is on tonight. I don't know. John, is, John's saying, what is the vet center? He lives in Iowa. Okay. The vet center is a readjustment counseling center. Um, it's open to all vets. Uh, if, you, if you're having issues, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what your issues are. You can, you can just look up the vet center. It's underneath your government pages. Google it. Um, it? here in Cedar Rapids. You hear that, John, in Cedar Rapids? And you go there, to set you up with a counselor. I mean, it's, it is, it's, they saved me several times. They saved me. You see, you know? that's, that's awesome. I see. I like to hear that. And Charmaine says she lives in Texas. Charmaine, I'm going to send you a message in a little bit and I'm going to send you my phone number and I'm going to help y'all find you a VSO officer in your area because I'm from Texas. Also, I live in the Houston area. And so I'll, I'll help you find a VSO officer in your area. Uh, we've helped, uh, one, me and John, the one who was asking you, uh, about the vet center, uh, he got a hold of a, a young lady that needed help for her dad. And so we worked in, for, out of Mississippi. And so we were able to get her dad home care and, and everything is going really good for them right now. So, you, you know, it, if y'all know us, a veteran that needs help. Man, you got John on here. You got Jay will help you. I mean, Sarah will help you. I mean, Wade will help you. I'll help you. Get a hold of us. I mean, we're just an email away or a message away. And I promise you, we'll do everything we can. If we don't have the answer, we know a few people who do have the answer. Right. And so that's, that, that, that's kind of how I kind of directed my thing. My counselor calls me more of a, a caretaker position, which is not what I've ever wanted to do, but that's kind of what I've been lately. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just, yeah, like I said, it's just a message, phone call away. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's true. It is. It's just a, just a message or a phone call away. And, uh, I, I know uh, like I, I've had my VSO officer now for 31 years, ever, ever since I gotten out. I just found out she's about to retire. I'm not very happy about that, but they, they got more employees, but man, that lady was freaking awesome. She knew about the Gulf War. She, I mean, as soon as I got out, she, she went up and argued with a couple of hospitals with me that try to make me pay a bill that they should have sent into the VA and man, they sent attorneys and everything to help me out with that. It was crazy. Well, that, that's the here in Lynn County where I'm at, uh, the new VSO, I'll give it to her. She, she's basically shit hot. She knows what she's doing. She's, uh, taking the reins and, uh, you know, she's kicking ass and taking names and getting stuff done around here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I you, you know, I, I I know that uh, like I tried to get a hold of DAV, but DAV was like, I mean, the guy at DAV, I was shocked when I got a hold of him. He's like, look, you got a VSO officer that's just awesome. Stay with her. And so I was like, okay. And so I mean, I was impressed with that that a, a DAV knew who this uh, lady was that, that helped out. And I mean, and then uh, uh, to me down in Houston, there's, there's a lot of places that 
uh, you can go to to get help. The VFW has VSO officers now. Yes. And so that that's what I like about, you know, VFWs, you know, get get involved. You know, one thing we did not mention tonight, Kevin, is um, through the VA, they also have that, that war-related illness and injury study center. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad you brought that, that up. Um, I, I don't know if you've had any experience with that or not. I, I went once, uh, but I know there was a guy who was on my show that is actually going through their new study right now. And he's supposed to come back on and tell me uh, how it went. It's like a six month program. What, did he do it like in person? Uh, he's Yeah, it's an in person. He just started it, I want to say about a month ago. Yeah, see, I, I, I did their program. And it was, it was, I guess it was to give them credit. This was, uh, May of 19 and it was, uh, over the phone. I, I honestly wasn't overly impressed and that's just my, that's my experience. That's just my personal experience. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, I hope, I hope other people have, you know, a better experience. Yeah. Yeah, I. But that, that's another that's another resource for you know go for veterans to reach out. Right, right. It it, it is, and you but, know I see you know, like like the Ross Camp Institute. Uh, these guys, Nova, uh, Doctor Nicholson. You know, the veteran has to take the initiative to initiate. Right, right. You know, we 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 can't just sit there in our recliners and think it's going to come to us. But. In the same sense, I'm going to say this. I, I will say because I'm 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 seeing what Edward is writing on here, and Edward, man, send me a message. Me, you will talk. But I'm going to tell you something. There are different VAs out there. I I, I agree with him with some of the stuff that. I mean, there are VAs out there that I talked to a guy about the Shreveport, Louisiana. You know, uh, Mr. Wilson, I got had him on, and I saw the crap he went through. I, and, and a lot of guys are giving up. But I don't want guys to give up because there is there is help out there. And, there is. And, 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 and let us find you the help. You, you know, just because that VA system you got down there, you know, Get get a hold of me. Let's see if there's other avenues that we can take. Find something else out there that that can help you out. And and I want to tell people out there that th- there is hope. You, you know. Oh well, yeah, you can't give up. I mean, there's other avenues besides the VA. That there there is there is other avenues besides the the VA. And so, I'm I'm hoping that that people will start getting the message that there are people out there that really understand the struggles that we go through every day. And, and I, I mean, I, I'm telling you, and they do a great job. I mean, uh, you know, Jimmy Acosta, I mean, that guy right there, that guy's full of information. Denise Nichols. Yep. Yeah, yes, I mean, he is. They, they got information out there that really, really can help. You know, and, you know, I I really, really appreciate you coming on the show this evening. And do you have anything else you want to bring up? I do. Let's go for I it. Lived, uh, I lived a life of bitterness for a long time. But now I'm going to live a life of betterness. There you go. I like that policy. Better, not bitter. And that's what I... Uh, I can't hope for all all my other brothers and sisters out there. I, I I like that, and I agree with that. Instead of being bitter, let's get better. Let's start helping let's one get another. Better. And I mean, wow. we 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 did we did a good job. You know, ninety ninety one, we we did a hell of a job. Yeah, we something to be in. proud of. Yeah, we went in, we kicked ass, took names, we came home. 
Oh, by the way, by the way, I got to read you this comment from Sarah. (laughs) She says, wow, I'm looking forward to that. Ha ha ha. Uh, I had had to read you that comment. And yeah, it's Sarah Boyd. She said, better, not better. She, she, she loves it, brother. And, and it's yep. true. I tell you what, man, you know, you know, we, we, we did our job. Yeah. Yeah. We did our job. We did what, what we meant out to do. And I wouldn't, I'll be honest with everybody out there listening. I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Not a damn thing. I made the mistake of accidentally telling my wife them were the best four years of my life. I'm still in trouble for that comment. But, well, you, you know, it, it was a different time in life. You, you know. You know, I, I, I think I told you the other night, I made it 52 years without ever being married, which means I made it 52 years without being divorced. Yep. That makes me a catch now, right? Yep, it makes you a catch. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Sarah's comment is on that one. <laughs> Here's your mom. My daughter's here. Your mom's commenting. <laughs> and, and everything. Uh, well, we did. We did our job, man. We did. We did our job. Yeah, and everybody should be proud of what they did. Hell out yeah! There. And I want to see. I want to see everybody when that memorial in DC opens up. I don't want to. Mar- I don't want to march down. I don't want to march down the street. I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy at the memorial. You know? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have tears in my eyes. I still have the bottle of wine that was waiting for me. Still, still corked. Now, hey, I I have a question for you. In y'all's counties or, or, towns or cities that everybody lives in. I want to know who all uh, I live in a, in, in a place called a county called Montgomery County and out here they have what's called it's almost like a, a it's a celebration for the veterans uh, it's a, um, a honoring the veterans and they have every veteran in that county that's ever served do y'all have stuff like that there? It's like a, a big, I mean, present, past. It, it's it's like a really, really big uh, a thing that's going on right now. Do they have that in Iowa? Yeah. Uh, we went down. What were we going on for? What were we going on? Veterans Day, right? Uh, my daughter and I went down for Veterans Day this year. It's the first time I've ever gone for a big celebration. And, uh, it was pretty neat. We got a big veterans park. They have a nice, they have a nice memorial. I got a, I got a nice brick there that'll outlast me. So, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, that's pretty you know, awesome. I, yeah. I just never really got into it. And now, now you're, you know, you know how it is when you get older, you get, you get kind of into that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it is amazing how you're younger, you don't, but as you get older, you really start seeing it. Yeah. You you start it's a, it's a sense of uh, of pride. It, it it's different. It, it just for some reason it's different, and uh, so you you know I I really want to thank you, Wade, for coming on the program, and I want to thank everybody for you know asking questions that I, I hope I was able to answer most of them. And, and, you know, and, you know, if anybody out there knows of anybody that needs help, y'all please contact us. You know, we're willing to do everything we can to help everybody out. And you got to keep, you got to keep me posted when you go do these tests. And, 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 oh, yeah. and we'll, we'll bring you back on and, and we'll talk about it and everything. Yeah. And, Definitely. I, I want to put you in contact with uh, Grace down at Ross Camp. Maybe, maybe you can have her on so she can uh, would love to explain what maybe what they do down there, and would, maybe we can get some veterans to head down there. Yeah, yeah. Tell them I got thousands of listeners who 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 would 
probably need need the help and man i i would definitely definitely like to ha- have them on and, and let's talk about their therapeutics and everything that they can help us with well, but, they, they need volunteers that's yes. for sure yes well thank you very much for coming on to the program today and you know we'll we'll stay in contact absolutely all right you have a great evening all right brother all right thank you bye bye i want to thank each and every one of y'all for listening to the program um no this right here was you know this right here was a a a great thing I, i really liked having weight on and talking to him And I want to thank each and every one of y'all for um, coming in, commenting. And, you know, if y'all have questions or y'all know anybody who'd like to come on the program, please. You know, I'm going to bring Jason back on in in a few weeks. And we're going to talk more about his experiences and stuff. But I want to thank each and every one of y'all for listening. Thank you. Y'all, please go to my website at goforsideeffects.wordpress.com. Or email me at Kevin Simon at goforsideeffects.com. And please help support this podcast and the veterans by clicking on the link below. Thank you for your support.